Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful day today. It's good to see everybody. So I'm glad to see everyone, and everybody looks happy and smiling. Just scan in the audience here. All right, we're going to get ready. We're going to open up in prayer this morning. Thank you, Lord. Once again, we're just so grateful and honored to be in your presence this morning. As we just lift you up with our voices, Father, we just pray that it will be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear, as I always say, Father. May all we do, Lord, be pleasing unto you, Father. In the name of Jesus, amen. Good morning. I hope everybody is awake and alive today. Amen, because Jesus is alive, and we should be excited and happy to be in the house of the Lord. So how many of y'all are ready to worship with us today? Ooh, it sounds a little sad. How many of y'all are ready to worship today? All right. Y'all want to stand with us and let's get to worship.
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We just relish in your presence, God. We're not trying to get through anything. We're not trying to move on to the next thing. Hallelujah.
thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Father. thank you for your goodness, God. We thank you for your faithfulness this morning. Thank you, Lord, that your goodness transcends a thousand generations. There is nothing this world can offer that compares to, to you, Lord, to your goodness, to your faithfulness. Thank you, God, that you are the surest thing that there is. You are the greatest, most stable hope that there is. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> thank you, Lord. We have to... We have to learn to, you can be seated this morning. We have to learn to honor the presence of God. Amen? We have to learn to honor his presence. Hallelujah. Well, how's everybody doing this morning? Good. Yeah? Awesome. All right. The week after Easter, and we're still celebrating the resurrection of Christ. Amen? Amen. Every day. Thank you, Lord. Well, um... I'm, uh, I'm the associate pastor here at Vision Church of Lockhart, just in case you're wondering who I am. My name is Pastor Kyle, and um, I'm going to take up tithe and offering this morning. Amen? So, let's turn to Proverbs 18.30. Proverbs 18.30. And it says here, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. Now, let's, let's go back to that uh, Proverbs 18.30. And then we'll get to Genesis in a minute. But how many of you know that the way of the Lord is perfect? The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. I'll tell you, God, he's so easy to trust in. Amen? You know, just like we were saying in that, in that prayer during worship, that God is the surest thing. And um, I'll tell you, the Bible says the word of the Lord's been proven. So it's not like, listen, when, you know, during tithe and offering, you know, people act like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm investing in some really shaky or, or risky investment. You know, I mean, listen, sowing into the kingdom of God is the surest thing that there is to sow into. Well, we got, we got three amens there. But I'll, I'll tell you, here, here's the thing. People get way too caught up on, on money, you know, and that's kind of what I'm showing you this morning. And, and those of you who have been here and heard me know, the way I believe and the, and the way what I preach is tithe and offering is not about money. It's about trust. It's about trust. And it says the way of the Lord is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. And it says, he is a shield to all who trust in him. See, I can, I can say, Lord, I trust you. See, I, 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 how can, let me just ask you this. How can you trust God with your life and you can't trust him with your bank account? Amen? And for those of you, you know, kind of like, oh, he just wants my money. I'm a, I do this. I tithe. I give. So you can't tell me that, you know, I just want your money because I live this. So, there goes that argument. <laughs> Before I was a pastor, I tithed faithfully since I got a job at 15 years old. I've been a tither, and the Lord has always provided for me. Amen? You know, David said, I've been young, I've been old, I've never seen the righteous begging bread. Praise God. But I'll tell you, God is a shield to those who trust in him. He's your shield. He wants to... He wants to uh, 
to protect you, to guard you. That's what a shield does, right? That's what happens when you trust in the Lord. You, you take shelter in the Lord. You trust him with everything in your life. You trust God with your career. You trust him with your marriage. You trust him with, with everything. Every part of your being, you trust him with. Amen? And so, you know, to tithe and offering, this is just a small part. Um, you know, dealing with finances, trusting the Lord with your finances is just a small part of trusting God with all of your life. Amen? And... Um, when you look at the word uh, trust and, and, and how it's translated from the, from the Hebrew language, it means to flee for protection or, or to confide in, right? So God's a shield to all those who flee to him for protection and all those who confide in him. And I don't know why, but that word confined, uh, confide, even before I, I, I had researched this, that word c confide just kind of popped up in my spirit when I was thinking about trusting in the Lord, you know, con being able to con confide in the Lord, being able to just, you, you got to be real with God to trust in him, right? If you're going to confide in somebody, you're real with them. You know, you tell them your, your secrets, you tell them your innermost desires, and that's what it really means to trust in the Lord, to, to get personal with him, Amen. Because he's perfect. So who else would you rather trust than someone who's perfect and someone whose word is proven? Right? So it's not like God's ever told a lie before. The Bible says he cannot lie. Amen? So just to prove that, um, you know, giving is about trusting. I want to take us over here to Genesis chapter 28 and verse uh, 20. Genesis 28, 20. And it says, then Jacob made a vow saying, and this is before the law, Okay. So then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me and keep me in this way, that I'm going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on, uh, so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be God's house, and of all that you give me, I will surely give a tent to you. Right? And let's, let's skip over a few verses and see what happened in Jacob's life in chapter 30, verse 43. Just a couple chapters after, after Jacob said this, thus the man became exceedingly prosperous and had large flocks, female and male servants, and camels and donkeys. So we see that with, with Jacob, it wasn't necessarily about the money in the tithe. It was more about a relationship with God. It was about trusting God. God, if you'll provide for me, I'll give a tenth of all that I, that I make to you. And... At that time, I'm sure Jacob's tenth was nothing. You know, Jacob didn't really have much. So I'm sure a tenth wasn't much. But listen, a couple chapters later, a tenth began to be a, become a lot because the Lord prospered Jacob. And so a lot of people think, well, when I start making a lot of money, then I'll start tithing. Then I'll start giving. It doesn't work like that. Amen? You've got to trust God with the little just as much as you have to trust him with the much. Praise God. So I just want to encourage you to, to think about these scriptures. Think about these things, what it means to really trust the Lord with your finances. I'm not trying to push anybody to give. The Bible says don't give out of necessity or obligation. But I'm just trying to help you to understand because God wants you to give in faith. Amen. And in the church, we need to understand, like, why do we tithe? Why do we give? Well, this, this is why, as we see from the scriptures, so it's trusting the Lord. Amen? It's trusting the Lord. So, with that being said, uh, you can go ahead and get your tithe and offering ready. And um, for those of you watching online, or if you're here and you would like to give this way, you can go to vclockhart.com. Oh, vclockhart.com, or you can give by check or money order to P.O. Box 1399, uh, Lockhart, Texas, 78644. All right? Let's go ahead and stand and we'll pray. Father God, we just thank you so much for the seed that's being sown this morning. God, we don't take it lightly. We thank you for the opportunity to, to, to sow, to invest in your kingdom. We do it gladly. We do it in faith. And we thank you, Father God, that for, the, for the fruit that you are going to bring from this. And we thank you for the harvest as well. God, we thank you for the seed that you give us to sow. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You are free to give.
awesome to see everybody. If y'all didn't know, this is Throwback Sunday. I'm just kidding. <laughs> now, I've had some comments that I look like back in the day. So I'm bringing it back. Society's trying to cancel things, and I'm bringing it back. <laughs> okay, anyways, onward. So we're going to go over our announcements this morning. I just want to remind everybody once again that you can go to VC. Lockhart.com for all our YouTube and Facebook services and events. And we still have, until further notice, we have our guidelines in effect. One, every other row will be blocked off. Two, families must sit two chairs apart from other families. Three, practice social distancing. Four, feel free to wear a mask or gloves. And five, if you feel sick, what do we do? Stay home. We had one person that remembered. Yes, stay home, or two. I think I heard two. So we we encourage you all to stay home, and if you feel bad, we want to pray for you and and look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Okay. And then we also have Wednesday services at 7. Are you all awake out there? (laughs) All right. I feel like I'm alone in here. All right. There we go. Okay. We have services at 7 on Wednesdays. And we're still in Christian philosophy in our English and our Spanish services. And then we also have um, Do It Afraid on Thursday nights. Ladies, want to encourage you. Yeah, thank you, lady. Yeah, yeah, all right, they're the ladies. All right, we want to encourage you all to come on Thursdays to come to our Joyce Myers Do It Afraid. We're having a good time there. And um, it's at 630, so please come. And if you can't make it Wednesdays, remember you have options here. There's Thursday and then Friday on the 16th at 7 o'clock. We have the doors are going to be opening at 630 for Love Life Girls Night In. Another of Joyce Myers announcement. Okay, there we go. I was going to say, wow, y'all are tough this morning. All right, so yes, we have... Um, Another event for ladies. Ladies, we got lots of things to come to, lots of options. Bring your sister, your aunt, your grandma, any females. And if you're feeling like a male, uh, if you're a male and you feel like a woman, you're still not invited. So <laughs> it's just for ladies. So we encourage everybody to show up one of these nights, okay? All right. Well, y'all have a blessed morning. Yeah, it's, you got to clarify that, right? It's 2021. You got to clarify it nowadays. That's not how we roll. Um, anyways, I'm going <clears> to... <throat> my, my wife and I have a, have a big announcement for everybody. And um, yeah, she's not pregnant. Everybody, that's the first thing. <laughs> she's pregnant. <laughs> no. Um, it's 2021. I'm pregnant. No, I'm just kidding. No, just kidding. Um, I don't really know how to say this other than just to be kind of straightforward about things. I don't know how to beat around the bush, but uh, Bianca and I are going to be uh, stepping away from Vision Church of Lockhart as the pastors here. And um, we are going to be uh, relocating to California to start ministry over there. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a, big, it's a big step for us, you know, to do this. And um, we'll, be <clears throat> we'll be relocating in the middle of June. So we will be here for a few more months. And just the Lord began to, uh, to drop this in my heart um, actually early last year about the next plan, you know, the next step in the plan that he has for us. So it's not something that we take lightly uh, making this decision, but we have to be faithful to follow the Lord. And... Uh, 
You guys know I live what I preach. And so when I preach about being open to the will of God and following him wherever he leads, you know, we, we live this, you know. And um, so while we are very hopeful and excited about what the future holds for us, and I'm sure this won't be the last step that we take in our journey together, but this is the next step, and that's all we know. And we feel, uh, we prayed about it, we, you know, for a while, we feel a peace about it. And of course, as my wife said, you know, it's, it's bittersweet. Um, this place has a lot of memories for us here, you know, just to, ministry is not easy, I'll just say that. It's not easy, but I will say that when you see the good fruit that comes from it, that's what makes it all worth it, you know. You guys make it worth it. And I, I appreciate all y'all's faithfulness and um, just support, prayers, everything. It, it means so much to us. And honestly, the greatest... Uh, way that you can bless your pastor in church is just to be there, you know, and uh, to be there and, and to be, to be ready and listening and, and you know, wanting to, to change and just, the reason why I got into ministry, and I've shared this with y'all before, is because I want people to experience the goodness of God like I have, you know, I don't want to hog it all to myself. <laughs> I want to share the goodness of God with others. I want others to be able to, to understand and know how good God can be to you in your life. And that, that was my only motivation for getting into ministry. And um, so we all start out somewhere. You know, the Bible says do not despise uh, small beginnings. And we all start out somewhere. And this has been a tremendous opportunity for us to pastor here together and to do life together with y'all. And, um, and I'll be the first to admit that I've not always said everything correctly or done everything correctly. Um, I've made my fair share of mistakes as a minister, but, you know, I appreciate the mercy <laughs> that you guys have. You guys know how I am. <laughs> So I appreciate the mercy, and I, I appreciate the belief. And um, it's been a great opportunity to minister here for the past, I think it's seven years now. It's allowed us to grow ourselves in our walk with the Lord a lot, and it's allowed us to grow in our gifts a lot, um, to kind of discover what God's put inside of us. So we're looking forward to continuing to discover you know, no matter how long you've been in church, um, keep growing. Keep going for the Lord. And you've got to listen to God yourself. Amen? And you've got to do what God wants you to do. Don't try to follow other people just for the sake of following them. Don't try to blend in. You've got to be unique to who God called you to be and to do what he's called you to do. Amen? And so God separated us for a time here in Texas, and well, my wife's been in Texas, you know, she's born and raised here, but um, it's time to, to move out, and um, you know, I, I always knew eventually God would, would move me out, I always just kind of sensed it in my heart, but I never knew how it would happen, because I'm the type of person, you know, I want to make sure everything's taken care of, and and uh, I want to be, you know, responsible and all that, but God showed me how it was time and that not only would it be good for us as a family to move on into the will of God, but it's going to be good for Vision Church of Lockhart. And I believe that even though it may be hard to, to you know, for some of you who are really sad to see that, um, you know, this, this church is not dependent upon Bianca and I. This is the Lord. You know, the Bible says, he who sows seed and water seed is nothing. It's the Lord who gives the increase. And so we're just instruments of the Lord. You know, 
the church is so much bigger than us. And um, so I know God's going to take care of Vision Church of Lockhart. And I know Vision Church of Lockhart is going to continue to grow and be strong. And uh, Pastor Sally is going to take over the, uh, the English service. And um, so, yeah, so it's, it's going to be good. <clears throat> and there's going to be some shakeups and things along the way. I know Sister Sandra is going to take over the Wednesday night classes for the youth and, and whatnot. And um, so it's good. Amen. We're... Where a void is left, God always makes sure to fill that void. And um, there's many different gifts in the body, and that's what's so beautiful about the body of Christ is it's not dependent on any, upon any one person. But it's been great serving here, and I'm going to continue to serve here until we leave. Um, although you will see more of Pastor Sally ministering, uh, but I'll, I'll still be ministering. But you are going to see more of her ministering as we get closer to June. And uh, I'll still be here. And I might be missing a couple times, but that's just because we're trying to get some things in order. Um, but it's been great. And I, you know, Pastor Sally and Pastor Jesus, I, I appreciate you guys giving us the opportunity to come here and us young little whippersnappers and, uh, you know, get some experience under our belt. And you you had a lot of faith in us. (laughs) So with that being said, we love y'all. We really do. And the best is yet to come. I truly believe that. Amen. That's all I have to say. She's not much of a talker. (laughs) Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now I have to bring the word after all that. (laughs) God is good. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Let's pray and we'll get started. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this morning, Father. We thank you for what you're going to do in this church, Father. Lord, seasons come and seasons go, Lord, and we just glorify you. And we thank you this morning, Lord. We pray for the word, Father, that you've placed in my heart that it would be good food for, for your kingdom, Father. Prepare the hearts of my brothers and sisters to receive, Father, what you have for them this morning, for all of us. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Thank Lord. you, Lord. Well, I'm going to talk fast because we got communion this morning as well. And, um, but my message today is on change title of my message, Change. How many of y'all like change? Anybody, you like change? Some people do. A lot of people don't. Nobody wants to get out of their comfort zone and and change to what they're used to. And, you know, I'm comfortable here. I don't want to do anything different. Don't call me out because I can't do that. But change is good. The Lord, um, actually, it's necessary especially in the Christian life, in your life, it's necessary to change because that's what God's all about, is change. The only person that never changes is God. In Malachi 3, 6, it says, For I am the Lord, I do not change. Amen? Aren't you glad that the Lord doesn't change? That all the promises that he has in his word in the Old Testament and the, and the words that were left for us in the New Testament, that they're still good for today? They're alive, they're present, they're for today. Elijah, Elijah, remember the story of Elijah? He declared that there would be no rain in the land. And then the Lord spoke to him and he said, get away from King Ahab and go to the brook called Sherith and there the ravens are going to feed you. So he was led out to the brook. And when that brook dried up, the Lord spoke to him again, and he goes, okay, now go to Zarephath, and there will be a widow woman, and she's going to feed you. After that, he left. He was hiding from Jezebel, and he went to hide in a cave at Horeb, and the Lord spoke to him, and he goes, what are you doing here? Twice. He told him, what are you doing here? And 
You see, it wasn't meant for Elijah to stay in one place for too long. It was just a temporary place that he was supposed to be until he fulfilled what God had called him to be. Amen. Amen. And so sometimes we're just at a place for a season. And so we have to be uh, open and, and willing to hear the, voice, the word of the Lord, the voice of the Lord. And that's in ministry, like Pastor Kyle was just saying. Israel, Israel followed the cloud of God during the day and at night there was the fire over them. And the nation was told many times to move because they would get and they would sit and then the Lord would tell them, okay, it's time to move, to move on. And some, the first generation that came out of Egypt, they didn't make it to their promised land. They were complaining, and, and they were in disobedience, and they were doubting. And guess what? They didn't get to see their promised land. But their children saw that promised land. And sometimes as Christians, when we, we come to the Lord, and then we get in our comfort zone, and we sit there, and we don't do anything else, we become stagnant, and we don't grow. Amen? So we need to get out. There's always change. The whole, our life is all about change. My example is I was raised in a church, and um, I would say that I've been going to church since I've been in my mother's womb, because <laughs> we were raised in the church. I was saved at eight, and then uh, I was there 40 years before I left that church. That's a long time in one church, but I was, we, it was home, amen? And so the first 20 years was, was all beautiful and wonderful, and then life happened, you know, and I became bitter. I became angry. I, I couldn't forgive. So for the following 20 years, there wasn't much growth because I was hindering what the Lord wanted to do in my life because I could not forgive. But the day I forgave, the Lord opened up this whole new world to me. I understood the kingdom of God. I understood what what there was, my, it seemed like everything was brighter and, and, and things were going so wonderful and I was hungry, I wanted to learn more. I wanted more of God, I wanted more. And I was just so hungry and, and the place where I was at, I had done all the growing I was gonna do there. Actually, I didn't grow. <laughs> but the Lord was calling me out because I needed to grow. It was time to move on. It was time to change. And so my husband, at the same time, you know, he had a calling on his life, but nobody realized of that calling. But the Lord uh, put it in his heart to move out. So he, he would go and, and visit churches, and I was faithful to my church. I, I, I couldn't find myself doing that. And so he went around town look, looking at different churches until he found one, and he said, I found the place where we need to move. I said, fine. You know, that was... Uh, a big step for me, a big change after you've been in one place for 40 years and, and uh, the people there, your family, it's like your, your brothers and your sisters, you know. And so we moved out, and this was in 21 years ago. And our journey began, and there was change. It was time to move on. That next church that we were at, we were there seven years, and... Again, there was change. The Lord told us to move out. If we hadn't listened to God, if we hadn't done what God had uh, put in our hearts to do, we wouldn't be here today. This church would not be here. Maybe there would be a church like it if, because if we were in disobedience and we didn't do what, call, what God had called us out to do, he would have put, given this job to somebody else. Amen. But uh, why? I say, yes, Lord. But don't you think that was hard? It was, a hard? it was a hard decision to make. It was change, and sometimes we don't want to change. We want things to stay the same. Amen? And if God has called you to be here at this place, that means that this is where you need to be. A lot of people have come and gone and, and said, you know, the Lord told me to be here, and, and they come and they receive their healing, or they receive or get whatever they, they needed, and which is fine. Maybe that's all they were supposed to be here for. And they're gone, but, when, but they never say, God told me to move on. 
You know, usually it's after there's a correction or after you preach the word of God and, and it goes again, all the religious beliefs. They can't take it or they won't stay in place to learn. Amen. Things are always changing. Amen. Every, every day things are changing. Technology is changing. Cars are changing. And I know more about cars because in the shop, you know, vehicles are changing and technology. And, and you almost have to have a degree to know how to, how to repair those vehicles because they're smart. <laughs> They have brains, and you have to know how to communicate with those brains. And so there's training. You know, we were just talking on Friday. It's time to start training. That We have to train every two years so that we can stay uh, uh, on top of all those changes. So there's changes in, in, our, in our spiritual life, and there's changes in our physical life. And we need to be ready for that, and we need to, to, re, to, to not be afraid of change. Amen? 2 Corinthians 3.18, it says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Just like there's change in our spiritual life, there's also change in our natural life. Do you know the greatest change that you've ever been through is when you accepted the Lord as your Lord and Savior. At an instant, you became a new creation. Amen. The Spirit of God came to live in you, and you were a new and improved. You were a new person in your spirit. Yes. You might have been the same on the outside. You might have had the same problems the minute you left church that day, but your spirit, you were changed. That is an awesome change. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for salvation. And then it says that we, that we are transformed in the same image from glory to glory. So once we're saved, then, then we want to be transformed, and we go to Bible studies, and, and we get in the Word, and, and we let the Spirit of God change us, and, and, and we learn how, how to live and how, how to be. And then in, we, the Bible says to be imitators of God. He's our Father. We get to know our Father. We want to know how our Father is. We want to spend time with our Father, and we want to do the things that He does. And we want to say the words that He says. You know that um, today's my an our anniversary. <laughs> we've been, we've been uh, together 38 years. And I spend a lot of time with him. Me and him, we're, we work together. And, and Well, he's retired now, but he comes to work with me. And so we're together 24 hours um, every day. And I know him so well because I spend so much time with him. And so I always know what he's thinking. And he knows what I'm thinking because we spend time together. And he, he knows me that well. And that's how we wanted to know the Lord, be transformed so we know our Lord that will, what is he saying? What is he doing? What does he want me to say and do? Amen. And that's how we grow from glory to glory. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Change is necessary. Amen. Psalms 55, 19. It says, God will hear and afflict them, even he who abides from of old. And then it says, Shayla. And that means to pause and think about that. And then it goes on to say, it says, because they do not change, therefore they do not fear God. Change is God's way of keeping you in fear of him. And it's not fear, oh, I'm afraid of God. It's in a reverent fear of him. Amen? And so we need to... Uh, change and, and a lot of times when we resist that change we're telling God that um, you know we're just we don't we don't trust him to take us on to the next day but if we change we're afraid we're going to lose control if we've already got it it's working good right now I don't want to change but then we don't we don't trust in God and God wants us to trust in him to step out and trust in him amen, amen? Life is made up of seasons. 
Amen. There's physical seasons, summer, fall, winter, spring. Amen. And then, and then the time, the, this world, this history is, is, is divided into decades. And there's decades, there's, there's years, months, days, hours, minutes, seconds. So there's always changes. And some changes take an instant to come to happen, and others take a while, it takes time. And sometimes it takes a long time. But in that time, we, we need to tr keep trusting in the Lord and believing that what he has promised us has come to pass because we change, but God stays the same. He's the same today, tomorrow, and forever. Hallelujah. Amen. There are spiritual and natural seasons. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse, we're going to read verse 3, one, I mean, verse 1 through 15. And here it's talking about natural and spiritual seasons, amen? There's different seasons and there's different callings for each of us. And we're all at different places. And sometimes when I think of change and, and, and as we're all one body, but we're at different levels, I always think about when the Israelites came out of Egypt and they said there was millions of them. It started, that group in Israel started with 70 people. They were Jacob's descendants when they started, and when they came out, there were millions of people. And they were all walking and heading to the promised land. And all those people, you know that some were ahead, some were in the middle, some were in the back, some were way back here. So we're all at different steps, but we were all, they were, we are all following God, right? We should all have our mind and our vision on the Lord, and we're all following the same God. But we're all at different places, and, and God has a calling for each one of us. He has a plan and a purpose for each one of us. Amen? In verse 1, it says, To everything natural, there is a season, a time for every purpose, spiritual, under heaven. I'm not sure if that's... Amen? And then the seasons expire. In verse 2, it says, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck what was planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal. You might say, wait a minute. I don't kill anything. <laughs> we do. We kill weeds, right, honey? We kill weeds. We kill animals for food. We kill at, in wartime, amen? We kill babies, abortion, right? So we do kill, so don't say you never kill, but it's, it's a time to kill and a time to heal. And it's time, America, to heal, amen. to repent and ask God to forgive us for all the sin that Christians have allowed to come into this country. Amen? A time to laugh. Wait, did I skip it? Yeah. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. There should be a balance in weeping and laughing. I know when I was growing up, we'd get to laughing and carrying on, and it was just like crazy laughing and our grandmother used to tell us, don't laugh so much. In a minute, you're going to be crying for something. I said, uh, well, now I can say the devil's a liar because there's a balance. We can laugh and we can weep. And be weary of people that don't weep. There's something wrong with them. They don't, their heart might be hard. Amen? A time to mourn and a time to dance. Sometimes we get stuck in mourning and we forget to dance. And mourning is just for a moment. Amen. A time to eat, a time to cast away stones, excuse me, and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. That kind of reminds me of, of raising your children. It's a time to hold on to them and take care of them and, and raise them the best way you know how, and then it's a time to let them go. Amen. It's a time to hold on and it's a time to let them go. 
Verse 6 says, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away. You know, sisters, <laughs> might be time to clean out your closets. <laughs> Sometimes we want to hold on to, to things of the past or we want to hold on to items that are so cute. I know I have you know, a little item that my son wore and one that my daughter wore, but that's all because you try to keep and hold on to everything. I don't think anybody of us have enough space to keep all those memories, keep our memories in our heart. Amen? Amen. Uh, seven, a time to tear and a time to sow. That tearing probably in the Old Testament, remember when they were in mourning or in grief or whatever, they'd tear their clothes and sit in ashes. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. And sometimes, Lord, give us uh, discernment to know when to do that because sometimes we speak when we're not supposed to or, and we don't keep quiet when we're supposed to. Amen? Verse 8, a time to love and a time to hate. And hate is a, is a strong word, you know. We, we're not supposed to hate anything. But the Bible says that the Lord hated evil. And we're supposed to hate evil. Amen? A time of war and a time of peace. Hallelujah. Change takes us to new levels. Amen. It gives us strength and to grow in the things that the Lord wants us to grow. And here, pretty much, uh, Solomon was kind of being a little bit pessimistic to me. It seems like he was saying, God, it's just this or this. Is that all there is to life? Is that all there is? No, God has so much more for us. He has so much to get for us to do and, and to be. Amen. And continuing the verse 9 here, there is profit and change. Amen. Verse 9 says, What profit has the worker from that in which he labors? 10. I have seen the God given tasks with which the sons of men are to be occupied. And when I look at this, I think of uh, the Lord gives you creativity. He inspires you. He challenges you. And I think about uh, in, in, our, in our shop, you know, there, there's, there's so many things to do. And to me, it amazes me. I look at the technicians and, and the cars come in there all mangled and, and crushed, you know, and, and they just make them look beautiful and they come out new, you know. He gives them he, he gives them wisdom. He gives them talents. He gives us creativity to make profit in your business, in your whatever crafts. His sister Grace has, you know, Lord gives her creativity. But he gives, he, can, he gives that to us also, to everyone. Ask. He'll give you creative ideas to make wealth. If you need a job and you don't have one, ask the Lord for a creative idea. And he'll give you one. Amen. Don't limit God to what he can give you. You can come up with the next best design. You know, God has, he is a God of creativity. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Change has a destination. In verse 11, he says, he has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their heart, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. History has been in times and it's been in changes. The, in the Bible, the Lord calls destinations, not destinations, I'm sorry, dispensations of time. Amen? I'm thinking about the, the destination. But there's dispensations of time. I, I don't know if you know that, but from the beginning, I wrote the time down, there's, there's seven dispensations of time in, this, in, in the world. And it started with the first dispensation was the dispensation of innocence. And that started in, when God created Adam and Eve. And it ended with the fall of man. Amen? That's the first dispensation. The second was the dispensation of conscience. And that was uh, with Noah. And it ended with the flood. The third dispensation is human government, 
And that started and it ended with the, uh, at the Tower of, Tower of Babel. The fourth one is the dispensation of promise. And that was, it started and it ended with the Egyptian captivity. The fifth one was the dispensation of law. It started with Moses and it ended at the cross with Jesus. He set us free from the curse of the law. Amen. He didn't do away with it. He came to complete it. Amen. The sixth dispensation, that's the time period where we're living in. And it's the dispensation of grace. It's the dispensation of the church. It started at the day of Pentecost, and it's going to end at the rapture. And then the seventh and final dispensation is going to be the millennial reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. So seasons have something. It has a destination, and it's a beautiful destination. The Lord saw the beauty in every dispensation. The Lord just saw the beauty and his grace and his love was there in every dispensation of time. And right now, sometimes we're so focused on, you know, we're focused on the bad things and, and you know, oh my God, we're in a different era and, and we're so consumed with, with the problems and, and, you know, we're looking at the bad things and, and we're just creating, we're not seeing the beautiful things that the Lord has for us. And sometimes we're going through some difficult times and we're so, we're, we're so engrossed in what we're going through that we don't see the beautiful things around us. The people that the Lord has sent in your life for a reason, for a purpose, and for a time. Whatever you're going through, whatever problem you have, God is with you. Amen. Amen. And he knows the beginning from the end. You know, when this problem came up, you know, when this situation came up, the Lord was there. It wasn't a surprise to him. It might have been a surprise to us, but it's, it's something that you're going through, and it's, it has a start, and it's gonna ha- it has an end. Amen? And God is going to get you there, whatever it is. If you're having financial difficulties, I'm here to tell you that Lord, the Lord is going to help you. If you're in debt, you know, I'll tell you what to do. This is what I did, because I was in terrible debt one time. I got all my bills, I put them on the table, I laid my hands on them, and I said, God, forgive me for what I've created. Show me and help me and give me a way out. It took me some time, but we got, oh, we got out. And now our, our thing is to live debt free. But the Lord will get you there. He won't keep you there. It wasn't a surprise to him. If you're having difficulties with relationships with your children or with your spouse, God will get you through that. Amen? Amen. He's there for you. There's a beginning and an end. My husband and I have been together 38 years, and we've had our ups and downs and tough times. As We were praying this morning, and and he's going, we've had difficult times, and we have times of blessing and rejoicing but they're all good and they're all beautiful. And sometimes we're going through a tribulation or, or something's happening in, in our life and we don't see the beauty. But when we get out of, that, out of that problem and out of that, we look back and then we can see, oh, that's why that happened. That's why God sent that person into my life. That's why God told me to do this or do that. Just pray to the Lord, and he's there to help you. He's there to get you out of whatever situation you're in. And you might think, this situation is, is too much for you, but everything's a piece of cake for my God. How about yours? Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In the meantime, we're back at verse 12. I know that nothing is better for them than to rejoice and to do good in their lives. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. This is the gift of God. Faith and patience is required when we have a change in life. It's just like trusting God with the blessings that he has for us. Amen? In verse 14, it says, I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing can... Nothing taken from it. God does it, and men should fear before him. That which is has already been, and what is to be has already been. 
Everything has happened before, and God requires an account of what is past. And this is what I was just talking about. Sometimes we don't see what the Lord is doing in the middle of our crisis or in the middle of our tribulation or the middle of our problems. Amen. We might not see what God is doing, but God is doing a great thing in our lives. Amen. And we and there's changes, and we need to change. We're going through a little change here in Vision Church, as Pastor Kyle was saying. But you know what? God has good things for us. Amen. He wasn't surprised, you know. When my daughter Bianca decided to go to Colorado to go to college there, to Karis Bible College, um, we were going there to ministers' conference. And, and that year that she decided to go, they had a music program. And she wanted to be part of that. And she had been looking to see where she should go. And, and she decided that that was the place that she needed to be. And she did the, the transaction in like two weeks. She got registered. She got, moved, you know, got a place to live. And, and we moved her up there. And, of course, it broke our heart when we left her there. And we're coming back because we didn't know anybody in Colorado. And she didn't either. I said, but today, you know, we know why she was there. God had a plan and a purpose. And she met Pastor Kyle there, and he's here with us. And, and we didn't know where they were going to go after they got out. We were praying that they would come here, but the Lord was going to lead them and take them wherever he wanted to, right? But thank God that they were here for the time that they were here. Amen? Amen. For those seven years. And they've helped us out a lot as well. And... You know, then she, we look back today and, and, you know, all these things have happened. But the interesting thing, too, is, you know, she had a vision board. Does anybody have vision boards and know what vision boards are? You know, you just have to put some things on a, on a board of things that you want or that you're praying for and believing for, and you have that before your eyes. And she, she always had this scene on her vision board of, of being in a place where there were mountains. And so when we came back, she came back and we were cleaning out her room and, and we saw that vision shirt, that vision shirt, that vision, that picture of the mountain we read on the bottom and it said Pike's Peak. It was a picture of Pike's Peak. And she, Pike's Peak was right in this, where she was living in Colorado Springs. You could see it. And she, her apartment, she had a view of Pike's Peak. So the Lord had a plan and a purpose. And she put that vision in her heart. And so he, he has a vision. If you have a vision, put it before your eyes. And God has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us. Amen? Just because we're all at different places doesn't mean that God doesn't have a purpose for you. And you say, I've been going through so, I'm, I'm so bad. Or I'm, you know, God is gracious. He's so good. You know, if you think, what can I do, you know? My dad, sometimes they say that, oh, we're too old to do. And I said, no, dad, you're not too old because you still have wisdom. And he gives us wisdom when we speak to him. Or you might say, we're too young. What can I do? You have a lot in you. Amen. So God is going to do great things at Vision Church. I believe that. He, like Pastor Kyle said, those were the words that I was going to say. The best is yet to come. I believe that God has good things for us. And I just want to leave you with one more scripture. It was week of communion this morning. And it's Jeremiah 29, 11. And it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. You hear me? The Lord is saying this to you this morning. It's God's word, and he's saying this to you. He says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Okay? Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. We have a future. We have hope in Christ Jesus. And I just want to leave you with that and tell you don't fear change. Amen? Change is good. And we need it. We need to change because we need to grow in the Lord. We need to renew our minds. We need to get strong in the Lord, especially for times as today and you're here and we're all here for such a time as this God knows that this moment was here he knew it from the beginning 
and he knows what's coming up next. And I'm excited to see what that's going to be. Amen? Y'all ready for, for a whole new season? We're going to start a whole new season, and it's going to be great and joyful. Amen? Amen? So every time you come to church on Sundays, Wednesdays, whenever you come, come expecting to receive great things from the Lord. Amen? Because if we come expecting, guess what? We're going to receive it. And so I'm believing blessings, great blessings for each of y'all, great growth, great power, the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. We're going we're gonna to be a beacon in the, in the middle of Lockhart, in the middle of Caldwell County, in the middle of the surrounding cities. And every day that I pray, I pray for my business and I pray for church, and I say that this Vision Church of Lockhart is the witness of the power of God working in us. Amen? I want you to believe that with me. Amen? I'm going to be praying for you, and y'all better be praying for me. <laughs> Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for receiving me. I'm going to pass it over to Pastor Kyle. He's going to lead us in, in, uh, in communion. But real quickly, um, if... Um, any of y'all has never received Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you want to do that today, um, you want a change in your life. You want, you want all that God has for you, all that God died to give you. There is so much. It's not just now. And uh, I mean, he has so much. There's so much in, in supernatural things for you. We don't have to live a humdrum life, but we can live a life full of Christ, full of the Holy Spirit. And be occupying until the Lord comes. And as we occupy, means we need to keep working. We need to keep leading uh, people to Christ. And you need the power of the Holy Spirit in you so that you can, can speak to the people when the Lord tells you to speak to a person, that you can go up with confidence and tell them all about Jesus and win him. And today, if you want to receive Christ, you're tired of the life you've been living. You're tired of just being just a humdrum, stagnant, and you want to be hungry for the Lord, you need Christ in your life. I want you to repeat after me. Lord, I'm tired of living the same old life. Father, I pray, I believe, Lord, that, that you died on the cross for me, that you were resurrected and that you shed your blood for me so that I could be whole and complete, that your blood cleanses me, that you died for my sickness, for my healing, for that I would be healed instead of sick, that I would be prosperous instead of poor, that I would be saved, Father. And as the time comes near to the end, Father, I want to change in my life. Change me now. Take my life and do something with it. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you said a prayer like that, um, let us know. We have a book that we like to give out that'll, show, that'll tell you what, what you just did. And we want to keep you in prayer. Amen? So, Pastor Kyle, thank you for those of y'all that are watching us on, on YouTube. You'll be seeing more of me. <laughs> thank you, Lord. All right, praise the Lord. That was a good word, wasn't it? Thank you. Change is healthy. We all need change. <clears throat> if you're not changing, something's, something's wrong. Amen? So don't let life pass you by, right? We ought to be living life to the fullest. So, <clears throat> all right. Well, we're going to go ahead and take communion. So if um, everybody wants to start making their way forward... We're going to form a line, and then um, you can just, you know, try to, I guess, keep your distance from other families. We're going to pass out the communion elements to everyone. 
this is a, a very a very serious time, you know, taking communion, and it's it's not just a uh, it, it's it's not just a you know I'm trying to think of the words skip like to my mind, but it's not just something that we just practice without thinking about the meaning of it, you know. Um, Communion is a way to honor the sacrifice the Lord has made. It's a way to remember, to, to keep fresh in your mind and your heart what Jesus did for you and how your life was purchased. It was purchased with the life of Christ, with the blood of Christ and his body. So that's what we're doing this morning. You'll see some of the, the little kids that are taking communion with us. The reason they're doing that is because they have accepted Christ into their, to their lives, into their hearts, and they understand the price that Jesus has paid for them. So we always tell people, if you haven't accepted Christ, we encourage you not to take communion, because it's, there's no point, <laughs> I guess I would say. <clears throat> quiet up in here. Everybody's just meditating. All right, does everyone have the uh, elements? We're good. Good to go. I don't want to start without somebody waiting. Okay, uh, here in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11 and verse 23. It says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So, Father, we thank you for the body of Christ that was broken for us. We thank you, Lord, that by the stripes of Jesus we are healed. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus went to the cross to pay the price for our sin to pay the price for, um, to give us peace, to pay the price to, to bring healing to us in, in our minds and also in our bodies. We thank you, Lord, that we are whole through the price that Christ paid. So as we partake of this, we thank you, Lord, that his brokenness means our wholeness. In Jesus' name, amen. You may partake of the body of Christ. And in verse 25, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in, rem in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Lord, we thank you for the shed blood of Christ. We acknowledge, God, that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. There is no forgiveness of sins. But we thank you that we can stand before you confidently and say that we are your children. We can come boldly to your throne of grace to receive your mercy in time of need. Thank you, Lord, that we can stand before you and say that we are just, that we are righteous because of the blood of Christ that has been shed. And we believe, Lord, in establishing this new covenant with you that was established through the blood of Christ, that we are whole in Jesus' name. We are free and delivered from sin in Jesus' name. Amen. You may partake of the blood of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for everyone here. I thank you for every single person here is a precious, precious child of yours. 
with, for whom Jesus shed his blood. We thank you that we are blood-bought, and as we go today, Lord, we live our lives in thankfulness and gratitude to you for all that you've done to redeem us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I love y'all. We love y'all. God bless y'all. Have a wonderful uh, week, and um, we hope to see you soon, maybe Wednesday or Sunday. God bless.